Thank you for joining me today. I am just in case, and I would like to discuss a rather controversial topic, the idea of refraining from giving unsolicited advice. It is important to reflect on this notion. While we may have good intentions and a desire to help and encourage others, I have come to realize, after many years, that giving advice without being asked for it rarely gives positive results. In fact, it can often come across as arrogant, regardless of how noble our intentions may be. This realization has led me to constantly ponder on how we can improve ourselves, especially in terms of helping individuals elevate their lives. While I am always eager to offer advice, I have learned from personal experiences. When my children were growing up, if I offered them advice without them seeking it, they would often take offense. They certainly wouldn't pay attention to it. This pattern extended to my interactions with my wife, friends, and co-workers as well. Over the years, I have come to realize that simply offering advice may not be as appreciated as I initially thought. After much contemplation, I wanted to discuss this matter with you today. It is important to acknowledge that unsolicited advice can often come across as judgmental, especially when the recipient is not expecting it or has not given any thought to the topic at hand. It could be something as simple as observing someone's actions and believing that you can assist them. However, let me explain why I believe giving advice is not a wise decision. This is based on my personal experience of offering advice to individuals who did not seek it. Firstly, if someone does not ask for advice, it is best not to provide it. It is as simple as that. This principle has transformed my own life as well. If people do not seek my advice, I refrain from offering it. Of course, if they do ask, it is a different story. When someone seeks advice, it indicates that they are open to receiving guidance. They are aware that they have a problem and are seeking a solution. However, if they do not ask, it is best to respect that. Secondly, this principle applies to almost every situation. With the exception of cases where someone's life is in immediate danger and intervention is necessary, there are very few instances where I would hold back from offering advice. In other words, unless it is a matter of saving someone's life or preventing harm, this principle should be applied universally. Lastly, it is important to note that refraining from giving advice does not mean that people are ungrateful. It simply means that they prefer to seek guidance on their own terms. On occasion, I find myself offering advice only to be met with hostility from others who fail to recognize the issue at hand. It is important to note that this is not an opportune moment for teaching, but that often leads to embarrassment. Especially when addressing the matter in a group setting, it is crucial to refrain from such behavior, as it can be incredibly humiliating. Even in one-on-one -on -one interactions, the outcome is often the same, an uncomfortable and awkward exchange. Through my experiences, I have come to realize that individuals need to witness the consequences of their misguided thoughts before they are open to change. This realization has taught me that, when people observe the results of their flawed thinking, they are more likely to seek guidance and become receptive to advice. Another lesson I have acquired is that your advice will have a much greater impact when individuals can see their mistakes. This ties into what I mentioned earlier about observing the end result or their flawed thinking. They need to witness the failure of that advertising campaign, the poor editing of a project, or the lackluster quality of a film. Of course, you shouldn't allow things to go to an extreme, such as letting someone edit a terrible movie if you can prevent it. However, in most cases, especially when it comes to personal and creative choices in life, give them the opportunity to make their own decisions and let them experience the consequences. It is crucial for them to see the outcome of their mistakes. This approach doesn't mean abandoning anyone. Instead, it involves closely monitoring their progress. It requires a bit more effort on your part but it is a worthwhile investment in the creative individuals you lead and collaborate with. Watch and track their progress, and you will notice the moment they awaken to the fact that things have gone awry. At that point, they will be much more receptive to making changes based on your advice. The ultimate impact of your advice lies not only in the value of the information you provide or the knowledge they gain, but also in the timing. Timing is crucial when it comes to teaching moments. People need to be in a position where they can learn from their mistakes. As a creative leader, I emphasize this approach particularly with those who work alongside other creatives and lead creative teams. If you give advice without being asked, it may lead to others seeing you as arrogant. In fact, they may even distance themselves further from you. 
Therefore, the key takeaway is to refrain from giving advice unless it is requested. This simple truth holds great significance, and I would appreciate hearing your thoughts on this matter. Leave a comment here. I believe that hearing different perspectives is crucial because, in my experience, people are more receptive to advice when they have personally witnessed the consequences of their actions. This is when they are most likely to learn and take the advice to heart. Although this episode may be brief, the concept it conveys is of utmost importance, refrain from giving advice unless it is sought after. I would love to engage in conversations like these. Please, share these insights with others when you come across similar situations and I encourage you to expand these episodes to reach a wider audience, particularly those in creative fields who can benefit from this. Thank you for listening.